Hello, welcome to Advent Preaching, and this is part two of our series, Preaching and Developing Biblical Sermons. Uh, I'm Christopher Finley. I'm so happy that you're here to join us. Before we dive in, let's start with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this moment to speak about preaching your word. I pray that you'll fill us with your Holy Spirit, fill us with your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Just to start out, this is the book that we will be following through, Preaching God's Word. It's a really good uh, book. It's used mainly as textbooks uh, in homiletical classes. It's Preaching God's Word by Terry G. Carter, J. Scott Duvall, and J. Daniel Hayes. And I'll put a link in the description just so you can buy it. Um, it's really good. Um, I'm taking a lot of major points from there. And you can follow along by getting the book if you like. But today we're going to talk about elements of a biblical sermon. All right. So this is our major topic today. Elements of a biblical sermon. So it's very important for us to know the elements of a biblical sermon. All right. And uh, that that's one of the major points that we want to learn about today elements of a biblical sermon and when we when we look at the biblical sermon we want to really look at what are some of the major goals of preaching all right so we got major goals of preaching so first of all if we just say top of the mind the major goals of preaching is to lead the children of God to Christ. Like if we if we look at Matthew, let's look at Matthew 28. This is the great commission. And it's so it says, okay. It says, and Jesus spoke to them saying, this is in verse 18, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptize in the name, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things and i have commanded you and i am and and lo i am with you always even to the end of the earth so this is this is jesus saying all authority this is a command with a promise all authority is given to me so when we think about what is it what that we're doing when we're preaching we're leading the children of god back home what a privilege that is to lead the children of god back home so now the first thing we want to do when we're preaching is meaning of the text in our time, okay? So this is, what is the meaning of the text in our time? So the meaning of the text in our time, that's, that's a very important element and goal of preaching, all right? Number two, okay? And this should be number one. But I'm just going to put it as number two. The word of God preached. This is such an important element because many times we'll hear sermons and it's not the word of God preached. It may be people's opinions. They may, you, you'll see pastors or presenters, they'll open the Bible, they'll read a text, they'll close their Bible and they'll continue to talk. And they may not even refer back to the text the whole entire time. I'm here to suggest that that is not the suggestion of preaching the word of God, all right? Okay, so now we have the word of God preached, okay? But most of all, the word of God preached in a way that listeners can what? Understand, okay? So we may ask, how? How do listeners understand? How do they understand when we're preaching? And the number one way they can understand is if you have a sermon that is structured, all right? So first of all, the, the sermon needs structure. And when the sermon has structure, you're going to see a relationship of understanding because they want to know where are you going with this? What is the purpose of this? And the main purpose for the, is for them to get the message. 
to understand salvation comes through Jesus Christ, to understand that Jesus has a transforming power in our life and gives us victory over sin and has died for our sins on the cross. But they need to hear that in a structured way, the structured way of thought, all right? So let's see, let, let's go through some quick ways what is the most effective way to uh, put together a sermon. And there's gonna be seven ways, like seven ways, most effective ways to put together a sermon. And I want us to know these seven ways, because once you, well, we spoke about this before, but I want us to dive a little deeper in it. And we're going to go one by one of the importance of it. Okay. So number one, all right. So these are, this is for, if you want to know what's the most effective sermons, right? Because you want to know what's the most effective sermons out there. Okay, so number one, if we're going to talk about the most effective sermons, number one, reading the text. Reading the text. So as soon as you go up there and you're going to preach, one of the most powerful things you can do is, let's say we are going to preach a sermon on Matthew 1, 23. Now it says, okay, behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. So the first thing you want to do, even as you open the Bible, you want to pray. So, and this is when, when you pray. So very important elements when you pray before you preach. One of the things we definitely want to pray for is the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's pray really quickly. Father in heaven, as we speak about your word, may you bless us with your Holy Spirit. May you come inside of me. May you fill me with the wisdom so I can share knowledge about preaching uh, and the little that I know. So please, Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit. So as we speak about your word, we can be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as you go up to preach, you want to read, you want to pray for the Holy Spirit to give you the wisdom, because even as much as you study, not having the wisdom of the Holy Spirit can highly affect you. So we want to always pray for the power of the Holy Spirit while we're preaching. So number one thing you want to do always is read the text. All right. After you read the text, number two is the intro. Okay. Introduction, or we call it the attention, because you have to understand, you have people that are spending 45 minutes sitting down. They just had a whole week stress, everything they're going through. They want to know, do you understand what they're going through? Do, can you meet their needs? And another thing is they, they want to see, do you know where you're going with this? So number one thing you want to do is have an attention. All right. Number two, no, no, number two is the attention. Okay. After you read the text, number three is the explanation. Then that's when you want to start breaking down the text. Okay, what is the meaning of the text? What does it mean? Okay, what does it mean? And you want to first talk about their culture. Okay, so as you're talking about the text, the first thing you want to go to is the meaning in the culture that is presented in. So if you're talking about Matthew, we know that this is a this is an early New Testament culture, Hellenistic culture. What was going on in that culture? What did it mean? What was the girl, world going through? Okay, now the prophecy was being fulfilled that the Messiah was coming. What was it like at that time? Who was ready? Who was not ready? We know that the, the wise men were ready, the Magi's, but the Pharisees weren't ready. What did that mean to the people at that time? It's so much of a blessing because when you put it in their culture first, the listeners, they start to listen and, and, and really envision that, picture that in their head. And what's the most beautiful thing about that is that it allows them to kind of have an idea of where you're going, where you're going with everything. So you want to first explain it, the meaning in their culture, so then when you bring it back to our culture, we see how relevant it is. Okay, so after you do the explaining, then you want to go into the main point. Okay, what is the main point? of the biblical text because we can make main points right but you want to make sure you're taking the main point from the biblical text it's such it makes such a big difference after your main point you want to start going into illustrations so illustrations are good because they illustrate how what the text means 
it's so beautiful. I know um, I recently preached and I made an illustration about a house. It, it says, Jesus wants to come to your house. And many times when we hear that God wants to come to our house, we're like, okay, great. God comes to our house. God comes to our house. And next thing you know, he, we, 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 we start seeing him painting. We're like, oh, wow, that's a beautiful color. And then we start seeing him fixing some leaks. And we're like, oh, wow, I need to fix that for a long time. But then after that, we, we, we start hearing uh, like sheetrock being broken. And we start seeing more people come in with sheetrock and, and building things. And we start seeing him build a patio and back deck. And then he's building a whole new West Wing. Then you start to realize my little cottage, my humble little cottage starts to, start, starts to look like a palace. And I was like, wow. I, I, I just thought he was coming to visit. I didn't know that he wanted to come and live inside. God wants to be with you. God is with you. God wants to dwell inside of you. God wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. So that's the power of an illustration. Now people start to see, wow, you know, that's the power of an illustration. Then we want to start doing applications, okay? Applications. But like, how does it apply to us, okay? Applying to current audience, okay? So applying to current audience, that's so important. Then the last one, number seven, we wanna do conclusion and appeal. Conclusion and appeal. Okay, why, why is this important? This is called a decision, okay? So what, it, what how, some people may wonder, how do they do a conclusion? A conclusion is going like this. You're taking everything you said here, right? Now, you could break this down into five sentences because you got the text, right? So then you want to make a conclusion that's basically a paragraph that is the major points from every single part here into like five powerful sentences. All of these, that brings you to the conclusion. And based on all the evidence right here that they provide, that's all this evidence is leading to the decision, all right? That's that's the whole point there. All, everything is, now, now, if we give some quick tips about how we go through this, the whole point of a sermon, a powerful, effective sermon, is seeing Christ through every single part of this, seeing Christ through every single part. So how do we do that? First of all, the reading of the text, how does it point to Christ? How, it, it, ha it must point to Christ in somehow, some way, everything, attention, Okay, this is the grabbing the attention. Now, you want to find Christ in the culture. How does Christ affect that culture? If we know it was Matthew 1, 23, we know that was about the prophecies fulfilling from Isaiah leading to Christ, from, uh, from Micah le leading to Christ. Find Christ in that. The main point, Christ has to be in the main point. Okay, uh, it is really great when you find illustrations that have to do with God. It's a beautiful thing where we can relate to God. Now the application. The application is so important, and I want to see if I could use a different color. Hopefully it'll work. The application, this right here, is so important, right? The application is so important. This application is so important because we, it comes to a point in the, in the sermon, and this is one of the most beautiful things, is when we realize in the sermon that it's not us, but it's Christ in me. It's Christ in me. So if we turn to Philippians, right? And this is one of my favorite scriptures right now. Okay. We see it says in Philippians 2, it says, Let this mind in, be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord the glory of God, the Father. Amen. So this is showing Jesus wins. But the most important part of this it, that applies to us is let this mind be you, in you that's in Christ Jesus. Now, if we turn over, we see right here in Philippians uh, 4, it talks about whatever things are, it, it says, be anxious for nothing, but 
And, but let's go in verse 6, Philippians 4, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So this is abiding in Christ. And, 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 this, is, and this, is, uh, this is just showing us. Now, if we look at this right here, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who threatens me. So this is this, the whole point of every application is Philippians 4, 13. We need to realize, right, in the application that it's Christ, it's Christ who strengthens us, okay? Now, appeal, you're making a decision for Christ. So all throughout the sermon, if we can make Jesus the center, that's the most effective biblical sermons, the ones with Jesus in the center. So this is a quick, we, we're going to continue going through this. Um, if I could, if I, sir, once, if I could spell sermons, right, that would be a blessing. Okay. Sermons. Okay. So this is, this is just a, a intro to the best, like the, the best elements of every single um, effective sermon. Now, what's another blessing? If you could figure this out, is if you could put transitions between every one transition. Every single one of these needs a nice, powerful transition statement. Every one of these, if you could put powerful transition statements in between, this is a way on your road to having a coherent, structured, beneficial. Um, biblical sermon. So continue to watch. God bless you all. I pray that these uh, little tip videos, they're made to be a blessing to you all. And this is um, a lot of things that I am studying that's being a blessing to my sermon prep. And this is things that I need to study over and over again to learn. And I pray that these could continue to be a blessing for you all. Thank you all for joining us. And um, check out more at adventpreaching.com. Adventpreaching.com.